welcome to this episode of Hustle and Pro. I'm your host, Kelly Walker. Let's start the show. Welcome to Hustle and Pro. No rinse, Odiase. All right, first of all, give me a grade on how I said your name. I'll give you about a a six. I'm not gonna lie, it didn't oh, flow. No. You didn't because I like people that are confident. You gotta come off the bat. I know you're probably confident as a person, but with my name, even if you said it wrong, you just gotta say it. But it's Norris, like Lawrence but with an N. Norris. Norris. Oh, yeah. Dang it. Okay. I'm gonna start, yeah. I'm gonna still use this, but I wanna say it right. <laughs> Norris Odiase. Is that there better? We go. Norris. Yeah, and and it's good because honestly, I should cut you some slack because usually I've People butcher the last name, not the first. So well, I've uh, got your last name written out in medical, so oh. I at least got that part right. I cheated on that part, but all right. Second quick icebreaker question: What's the most played um, song or artist on your playlist right now? Man, yeah, look, I mean, I mean, look, yeah, or just I, or just ma guess, make it up. I like Afro beats, but I like Drake. I'll say Drake. Okay. Drake. Yeah. All right. I just like to, you know, to find out yeah. a little about your personality. All right. So I want to tell our audience about your story because I'm a Red Raider. And so you're a Red Raider basketball player were. Um, and so I just kind of want to hear a little about your sports background growing up in Fort Worth area. Right. And yeah. then um, and then sort of that transition time from high school to the college level. So it was um, Elevate. Is that right? The the right, correct. year that you spent there. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, like you said, I grew up Fort Worth, Texas. I went to North Carly High School. My my senior year, I didn't have the offers that I wanted. Uh, I always saw myself to be a high major player. And at the time, North Carly High School was literally, it was guard central. We we're, were a known high school in Fort Worth, but we had the likes of a Willie Warren that came back, that went to our school a long time ago, and they won state. And so when you do something like that for the first time, that's kind of like overdone. Like you only bring guards in. that looks like Willie guard, 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 or repeat the, everything. repeat the success. Yeah, exactly. And I see it. The formula worked. Um, so that, that was kind of the emphasis on in high school, kind of running through the guards and to the detriment of my development. So I did, you know, what, what most people nowadays do it. And it wasn't a thing then it was kind of different. All my friends are going off to college. I'm a twin. He went off to Texas Tech. And I was just like, well, I, I don't have the offers that I want right now. I don't have any high major offers. I, I know I'm better than this. So I, I took a leap of faith and I went to Elevate Sports Academy in Delray Beach, Florida, where I did a year of post-grad. And that year really set me up to go to a Texas Tech. And I say it set me up not because of sounds bad, but it's the truth. Not because of anything they did. <laughs> and I, a bunch of my teammates will say the same thing, but just the extra exposure. Um, we had a national schedule. We played the likes of, a, what is it called? Oak Hill and, and those top schools. And I got into those rooms and against that top competition in front of the right eyes and, you know, kind of propelled that way. But I say that while also knowing this, like as I was playing these good games and having good performance, it's like I'm like okay aha like I know uh, I knew I was capable of this there was no coaches coming into the gym like nobody would come and it was almost leaving all of the kids discouraged because a lot of kids paid money to go to that school I yeah, you think that was the point right like that's yeah. the whole idea exactly I was blessed with the opportunity to get a scholarship so I didn't have to pay a dime but some people were paying a lot of money to go to this prep school like the likes of an IMG, this is a sidebar, IMG mm -hmm. just sold for like $1.2 billion, which is crazy. But we would play those schools that people pay for, and nobody was there. And so me and my friend, Steven Spurlock, he finally just told me, make a mixtape. And they already have the film. It's like, we should make a mixtape to send out to the coaches. So literally, we did it ourselves. We pulled the film, huh. we looked at our film, and we out, we literally had a plan. So if if there's, we had like top schools that we were interested in, and it wasn't just like, oh, we love to go to their school. We were like, no, nah, like, do they need a big? Do they need a guard? Okay, what does that guard do? Like, we matched ourselves up. We you made like it recruited easy. yourself, yeah. Literally, or you literally. you reverse recruited, right? Like, you were looking yeah. for the people that needed you. And I and I called it. Uh, we call it like the senior. What is it? The service list. Like, we would literally had columns. It was so detailed to check off. Okay, I do this. 
I, and then I show it in my tape. I play de- like this is the type of defense you need. I show it in my tape, the length, the guys, how, how I stack up. Wow. And so we did all that, and we didn't just send it off. We sent it to exactly like, okay, he recruits the bigs. Let me send it to him. And so I sent it to like over a bunch of assistant coaches all over the country at our top schools that we wanted that had a scholarship open. And then literally like the next day, I'm not even kidding. I'm starting to hit getting hit hit up by coaches all over and we're we're just going crazy like oh my god we did it that's cool that's cool i mean you should do that for other people (laughs) yeah they they start flying into florida and now we have coaches around the gym and they are like oh and we're looking like no we did this right and you know long story short i went to texas tech after that yeah i love it that's cool yeah you should you should repeat that program and that should be your business if it's not to do that for other guys Coming in. Okay, so you get to Texas Tech, and you have some big milestones there. Freshman double-double. The first freshman to ever get a double-double in your opening home opener. Does this sound right? I butchered that. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, and then let's see. I think, I don't know if this still stands, most career wins in Tech program history. Yeah, definitely still stands. Yep, yep, most winning this player. I take pride in that, too, because we. I was there for I was there for a while, five years, and through the five years, I broke my left foot, broke my right foot, been through coaching change, been through, you know, adversity. And, you know, I just saw our program change under different coaches. And mm-hmm. Tubby Smith was great for us. He left my my sophomore year. He left to take the job at Memphis. And that was kind of when we were building something. We had just went to the tournament the first time in a couple of years, a long time, a long time for Texas Tech. Yep. Um, and that was me coming off a, a broken foot. And the coaching change, that that transitional period for us, we had me, Keenan Evans, Zach Smith, Justin Gray, the core that came in. We we kind of set the tone and the foundation. Nowadays, a lot of kids would have left. We saw that we were building something there, and we took a leap of faith. Me and my specific situation, it, the playing style, again, changed. Like in, in high school, it was guard-oriented, heavy. And then when I finally got to college, I'm like, okay, like, Tubby came, he flew out to see me. He likes the way I play. Like I was the staple in the offense. Like I got the ball, I played like, and so I was looking forward to growing in that. But then Chris Beard comes in and it's a different offense, a different thing. Like sacrifice was needed. And I did sacrifice and we did all together and, and it looks uh, like it did. And so it just, it's a great story of just, you know, even though, a lot of times we think we know all the answers, but if you look at the bigger picture, like we did, we we had a core group ready to build and grow, and we stayed true to ourselves as a team, and and we were able to you know reap the benefits of that. So, because with the coaching change, with injury, another injury, you could have easily bailed or redirected and moved around a couple times, and probably would you know wouldn't have ended up where you ended up. Right. Yeah. 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 And it it was tough. It was a tough situation to where I was tested and the coach I'm close with all of them. I really more so Chris Beer. But when he came in, it was it it tested my will because he came in a totally different kind of style of communication. And I'm I was the leader of the team. I've been the captain on every team I've been on. And so it's like a butting of heads almost. And then I had to really sit back when he got in. I had just came off a. On my sophomore year, I broke my left foot. I just came off of that, and I played. I finally got back to the tournament, and I played, but I wasn't myself. When he got in, Chris Beard, during that that middle, that summer, I literally broke my other foot in one of the first practices with Chris Beard. So it's just like, all right, I have to shut up and kind of, you know, see it from a different lens. And he started just pouring into my leadership, like growing me off the court, you know, sending me books. I would read books while I'm rehabbing. And I went from like 300 pounds to 245 because I'm looking like, how can I serve and help and lead the team in a different way? These guys got to see it now that I can't play. Okay, let me figure out different ways to communicate with each guy. But also they see me working. I'm changing my whole body, change the way I see it. So that whole year was my red shirt year, that junior year to where I grinded and I grew. And then I came back the next year, Elite Eight, and then the next year, Final Four. So That says a lot, no, was, though, changing yeah. your style. Um not taking a step back from being a leader on the team, but changing your perspective, right? What the leader looked like because you couldn't lead on the court. So you found another way to do it. Who's the best coach you've ever been coached by? Best is subjective. I mean, or is, yeah, it's, it's a great question. The best coach. 
I think I would say they all hold held their place in my life the time that I needed them. When I went into college, a guy that believed in me that took a chance on me, a Tubby Smith. Yeah, I finally had a, a bunch of other high major offers, but a guy that poured into my development. And I kind of needed that father figure-esque kind of guy to start because my dad was away. He was in Nigeria. Uh, lost. His, he got his visa taken for 10 years, from 8 to 18. I was without my dad. No yeah. fault of his, but that's just kind of the stories yeah. a lot of immigrants go through that nobody kind of talks about. But yeah, I was without that. And so when, when I saw him, Tubby, he already gave me that feel. I needed that through the first couple of years of my uh, my college career. And then he left and Coach Beard kind of jump started and, and took ran with what they were already pouring into me. They're already saying like lead, pour in. They all saw me as a leader to start, but he he really helped me take it to another notch off the floor. And really, I think the the main thing he really did in my development is he gave me a name, like, okay, you're the leader. He gave me responsibilities and I took it and ran with it. And I, sometimes I was too hard on a lot of our guys, but we, it was all out of love. And, and no, I, so I couldn't, I couldn't say a best coach. I, I, I know the success would say Chris Beard, but you know, Tubby Smith did things for me that I don't think any other coach in my life has done as far as becoming a man. You know, you go in yeah. 18, 19 into college and you become this person I am now. So, But I think that's also the sign of um, good coaches can see what the player needs at that time in their life, right? And give that to you when you need it. Like if you, you know, the different pieces that they could give you, it, it all shows that that was their strength to coach you at that time. Yeah. To see that. Yeah, exactly. So, all I, right. So, I, you talk I, about thankful. Elite Eight. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. You want something else? No, to say? no, no. I'm just thankful for them. So, so you mentioned, I want to talk about tech um, games here. So, this is your senior year. You get to the national championship game, the championship yeah. game. So, take me back and tell me what you remember most about like leading up to that and, and that experience. I mean, that experience is crazy. I mean, to to be honest, I I remember a lot, obviously, but it I look back now and I didn't enjoy it as I should have because I was so locked in, like like literally locked in. I could tell you leading up while we're at the final four, um, Coach Beer was big on smell the roses, smell the roses, like take it in early so that when we step up on that floor, like we're not spooked by, oh my God. So we, he, he did the open practices where there's a bunch of fans come. We're already in there. So we're, we know the noise. We see the people, we see the lights, get that, get that out of the way. Yeah. That's and smart. so before yeah. we played, I think it was Michigan state, there was something that we did that we never did. And I went off on everybody, including the coaches. Uh, we went to, Literally after, I think, the open practice, we walked around to smell the roses and we went to like this ice cream shop and we went to this ice cream shop. We're upstairs and I'm just seeing like fans. We're taking pictures with fans and everybody's getting their ice cream. And in my head, I'm just sitting there like, what the I was getting pissed. I was like, what the hell are we doing? Are we like, doing? This is this is not our process. This is not how we it wasn't even a game before day before the game. But like, this is not what we do. Like, we literally were so detailed to where we had. Um, I told them to take up all the phones every night to be that locked in because, yeah. you know, that was a thing. And so I just saw it as a distraction. Like, why are we over here right. eating? I literally kept, I, I, I don't know why. I was just like, we're eating Sherbert and shit. Sherbert right. and shit right now. Like, I kept saying that. Like, and it's not time for that. Like, you didn't want to, like, lose your, you maybe saw it as a distraction and, like, you were getting soft. Saw, you want to lose your edge. Exactly. I saw it as a distraction. So when we walked back to the film room, coach is like, all right let's bring it in and I just go off like on everybody and then like for a while too like I'm cuss <laughs> like I'm cussing everybody out like we don't do this lot like and coach beard goes like well we got our leader ready I know we're ready let's break it out and I'm just there you go. I, I was pissed though but no that was that was kind of a fond memory of how locked in I was so I, I can't really <laughs> say I I I smelled fond the roses memory. but when I well, yeah, when I because everybody <laughs>, laughs about it. It's a story that you know most Texas Tech fans know about me during that time. But when I look back and I look at the pictures, I'm like, man, like it was unbelievable just to be there. And you know, Red Raider faithful travels like unbelievable. So it 
And just to hear the stories, I still to this day, and I relive through different people, unbelievable. So it was a it was a life changing experience. I bet it sounds awesome. It was awesome to witness. I wasn't witnessing it in person, witnessing it in my living room, uh, cheering and very excited. <laughs> my husband and I are both Red Raiders, so it was, awesome. fun. it was fun for us to watch that whole thing go down. All right, you mentioned your twin earlier, so you have a twin brother who was also at Tech with you, or he was ahead of yeah. you. Yeah, you said yeah, he, he went was, ahead of you. Yeah, he went ahead of me. He was at Tech. Um, he's in med school now in in, in Galveston, so. And I have two older sisters. They're twins too. That are also twins. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other siblings, or is is that it? Two sets yeah. of twins. My mom, she prayed for two sets. She got two sets. That's it. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Nice. That's good. Um. All right. So you after tech, you hit to you land in the G League. Yeah. After tech, yep. I I did training camp with the Suns, and then when I was with the Suns G League, COVID happens. Go to Ban Bros of Bamberg. Uh, long story short, we can keep going, but that's kind of my stint <laughs> right after. Yeah. And then you finished this past season, which is only a month ago, right? Um, with the Texas legends here in Frisco. Yeah, I did. I did. I got a chance to, to be with the Texas legends for like 12 games in one month, <laughs> the last month of the season previous, I was with Greensboro for this year. And then half of last year, I got there in January. Okay. So no, it was, a. Uh, it was a good time to be at home and see, honestly, the favorite, the best part, probably shouldn't say this to Texas Legends fans, but the best part of playing the Texas Legends was tech fans coming to the games. Like I am tech, tech, tech over, yeah. over everything. So honestly, no, it, it was, That's uh, great. it was definitely a, a, a learning experience this year with the team, but it was always good to, to come in and kind of rattle 12 games off in a, in a, in a month. So, yeah. End of the season with a bang. Yeah, we enjoyed watching you there. Um, you know, we live here in Frisco, so we're at Legends Games a lot. And oh, that's I, cool. I got to interview all the players at Media Day prior to the season starting. So obviously you weren't there. You weren't in the rotation. Um, so yeah. I'm happy to get to talk to you now. Um, I want to ask you, you said you're tech, tech, tech. How like involved with you or involved with the school or like keeping in touch with coaches? And I don't know how like, in it are you still <laughs> uh because i hear i hear rumors that you are still very involved especially very, like basketball I'm program very. and no i'm extremely involved and it's yeah. a blessing it's it's uh humbly speaking a lot of people think i'm the face of our program and tech and i'm i, I it's a blessing to be seen as that but i always say i'm a regular guy uh, involvement i just we we signed we we hired a new coach i was on the 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 committee to pick the coach it was yes. me um, our okay top i didn't donor. want to say that i wasn't sure if that was like all of us allowed no, to say yeah. that so. good no okay. yeah no yeah it's public good, i didn't good. i didn't think it was going to go public at the time but it's public it was our ad on there our our head football coach and one of our our main contributors on there and then myself so i love that group i of, love that they take somebody that's the face and you get input you get to keep having input in the legacy that's behind you you know that you helped build as a player. I think that's great. <laughs> it was, you know, when you do something like that on my, if you're in my shoes behind my eyes, you're like, okay, well, a thought that went through my head was like, ah, they just picked a player that they know everybody loves. But then another thought was like, nah, that's actually really cool. And you have a, you have a staple here. You can say something. So I go in there and I'm like, like, all right, let me play the background at first. But I'm like, no, I have an obligation to, you know, our fan base and what we've built here to find the right guy. So it goes from my real self coming out. And I'm telling you, I'm grilling these coaches. Like it's like, I'm talking the most, like, it's crazy. Like I'm, I took it that serious. And now it, it meant a lot. It meant a lot to me so much so that like, it's on document. I told Kirby is our AD. I was like, I'm not going to lie. I don't care if we have practice, whatever I'm doing this. And I told my coaches that we had at the legends, but because it was huge. I mean, people were, and during that time, people were calling all over the country, you know, like the wildest names would call my phone. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like, and we had a secret group chat because if news broke, oh, a, yeah. a candidate would have to take, it was a lot. But That's cool though. That's cool yeah, that you got that access and behind the scenes. I mean, don't comment on this, but I predict you're going to end up working there one day back when you're done playing you'll everybody be, be says that i i love <laughs> i love tech i love lubbock and you know i i have a, a a footprint there in a major way but 
you know, wherever the Lord leads, I'm not, I never cancel anything out. And people say, oh, you'd be a great coach. You'd be a great, I've never even thought of being a coach. But again, I think as you're young in your career, you say yes to things on yeah. the way up because yeah. I don't like, so. Cause you don't know, knows? you don't know yeah. what, what's next. I mean, you can't always predict your skills, how your skill set's going to apply to the next thing. So, you know, learning everything you just went through with that coach selection, you learn a lot, right. And you yeah. got answers to things and you got a different perspective and you learned about processes back there. Like that will, it will come up later. You know, those are all yeah. good experiences. All right. It's, so uh, I know that you host a podcast also mind bully pod. Yeah. And I, yes. is this, um, I love that on your Twitter of your podcast, you still have a cactus up there next to the name. <laughs> I did see that. Um, so tell me about that and what, you know, what your podcast is all about and what the personality yeah, of that is. My Billy podcast is really derived from my time in Germany. I kind of glossed over it, but, and really my life, long story short, to fast forward everything at the early age, I was sexually assaulted from like six to eight. And so when that happens, you feel insignificant. You feel less than I thought the way I think I'm like, Oh, I'm the sweet one. Like, why'd y'all pick me to do that to the, my older women in my life, like uh, other than other kids around. So that already had me kind of feeling less than and significant, like no worth. And so then my dad, you know, as a kid, you don't know why things happen. And my parents were Nigerian. If anybody knows Nigerian, they're close vest or secretive. Uh, most immigrants maybe, but so they, I didn't really know why he couldn't come back. So I was angry and, oh, sure. it must be because I'm insignificant. It must be something I did. I think as a kid, you, yeah. it's almost quote unquote, it's like, we're basically narcissists. Like we think everything's about us and right. everything's us, us, us. So some of that played a part in, in me feeling that way. So I'm just searching as I go to school, like, okay, I'm searching for evidence of what I can do. I pick up this ball literally only because I'm tall. And, you know, I saw the joy behind my family's eyes whenever they watch Hakeem Olajuwon play. I remember watching my dad watch the game. So I'm like, I don't really like basketball at that time, but I'm like, I see the way it's making them feel something. It's like, significant. Like it got so the I'm reaction like, you wanted. Yeah. Like I yeah. could be something like that. So I go and I pick up a basketball and I run with it to college. I get to a point in college, my senior year, and um, I had family come out and watch me play. And literally, we played Baylor days before um, Valentine's Day. They got hit by an 18-wheeler. And I use this, and I say this in this kind of story here because it's literally everything, and it's vital to me because I am proving, proving, proving my significance through the game. And now I finally have my family there with me to watch me play like, oh, at the moment, like I feel the most significant, something like that reminds yeah. me, no. It, and I internalize that and I push and I suppress my feelings. And at, during that time, I, I'm like, okay, they would want me to keep going, keep going. So I didn't really go through it during that year, during that same final four year, I'm suppressing, suppressing. I have a greater goal to achieve for my siblings, for my cousins. And so I go and I, and I play in the national tournament, go to the Suns, and I'm pushing, I'm proving, I'm blessed with the opportunity to play in the Germany for a, a big money club, a top club over there in Brosa Bamberg. And so I get to a point where I'm, I'm playing well and I tear my hamstring and everything changes. And then COVID was a thing there. I had a 9 p.m. curfew. I had a coach that made it tough on me. You're the American over there, rookie. And he, he's been fired three times, terrible. And so long story short, I was in a position where I just left the team and I had a month where I just locked in with myself. You know, all this time I've been suppressing, suppressing and just pu pushing through trying to prove something. And when you're faced with a choice, whether, okay, keep suppressing your emotions or surrender a lot of people. And I felt in that moment to surrender in the wrong ways to take my life because of what happened to my family members. I'm like, why am I only, I'm here three out of three in the city or none of us, like two out of three of Gosh. that were in the city, my family members that came for me are gone. And That's... why am I still here? Yeah. And so it kept, it, it kept like in my head in that moment. And so yeah. when I couldn't play the game that I went to Germany for literally a curfew, literally I tore my hamstring. I was in that kind of middle stage and I did surrender in a different way. I surrendered back to my faith because I think 
I was struggling the whole time <laughs> through sure. suppressing my emotions and surrendering. I went back to my faith. And, and during that time, I really found and found myself again through my foundation. And then the way I think, I'm like, okay, I go through something real in my life right now. I'm not the only person going through this. No. And so later on, Mind Bully Podcast. But no, Mind Bully Podcast is overcoming that negative voice, uh, overcoming that that voice that says that you should surrender, you should take your life, you should, you're less than, you're insignificant, you're you're not worthy of love, you're not worthy of anything of true worth. Mind Bully and, and what I'm passionate about is helping youth, helping people, anybody in the journey within the climb of where they're trying to go overcoming that negative voice so that's amazing um i love that and that's really good important work that you're making a difference so Thank you know you. here i am like i'm like oh let's talk about all the the shiny glossy cool <laughs> big stuff right in those big milestone moments and stuff in your life but then you know the the stuff you just talked about are are just as impactful and important than that to really shape you and it, it's yeah. the part that tore you down, but um, I think it's really important that you're talking about it. And so other people that are going through the th anything like that can hear and hear yeah. how you approached it, how you probably daily still do and have to, and right? It's, not to cut you off. And it's probably hard for many sports shows and many people I get on with because I'm passionate about what I just said. and 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 so I get the, you know, if I got an interview after a game, wanted to talk about the shiny stuff, like you said, but it's like, that's not what's driving me. You just see the product, but that's not where it, it's coming from. And yeah. I think like to your point, talking about the real things in my life, in life, I think confidence is opening up the door to your life. Okay. This is what I deal with. This is what I went through. This is yeah. what I'm going through. This is what I think right now. I don't know. I do know. I don't know how to go my next step, but this is what it is. And this is how I'll grow from that. I think that's the real stories. A lot of athletes, a lot of people just want to be seen as people first. And then, you know, oh, the traits that you have, that grind, that mentality that did the thing that did and got to the final four. That's great. But let's yeah. look at the traits that you have. The, so then, yeah, the deeper stuff. I wrote down something you said, confidence should come from who you are on the inside, not what people see on the outside. That kind of just summarizes, I think what you just said, it's, it's not all the flashy stuff and the, the, the TV broadcast in the middle of the court. It's, it's all the stuff within you that gives you your confidence to move on. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, man, man, I learned a lot from you. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I know that you're, you know, in the, in the DFW area. And so we weren't able to sit down in the same room in Frisco, but I'm super glad that you got on here with me and zoomed so that we could at least meet, I could meet you and share your story with my audience. So I appreciate no you. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. I always say people invite answers. They don't invite problems. So I'm glad that I was an answer to somebody's problem today. So thank you. Yeah, very much so. So thank you. And thank you for listening or watching this episode of Hustle and Pro. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube so you'll get an alert on our next episode and follow us on Instagram at hustle underscore and underscore pro. We'll see you next episode.